Ah. Ah, bless you. You guys are too kind. Good morning, good morning. You can grab a seat. Thank you for standing. That's so honouring of, of, of Monica and I. Um, we are so uh, glad to be home. We, we had a great time away. Uh, we thoroughly enjoyed our travels. We thoroughly enjoyed visiting different places, having extended family time. But there comes a point when you say, you know what, we're ready for home. Uh, we're ready for home. We went to church last Sunday morning in Tampa, in Florida. It was a four-hour service. And uh, at the end of the four-hour service, I thought to myself, I need to make some changes back home. Our services are too short. No, I didn't. I didn't. I thought, no, I'm ready for home. And uh, really interestingly, our kids started to say the same. We're ready for school and all those things. And um, so we really are. We're so uh, glad to be back here. And as I would echo Monica's words. There's nowhere like home. There's nowhere like home. And uh, we've been to some great churches. We've been to some churches with very um, famous preachers and very famous names. And uh, yet despite all of that, often we would come out and just say, oh, but we, re- we miss our people and uh, we miss the atmosphere. And um, um, sometimes I have probably even taken for granted just the richness of the presence of God that we have in this place. Uh, been to some some churches, huge churches. I went to a church that had an 8,000-seater auditorium. Uh, they had two morning services. And uh, honestly, I walked out of that service and I said, I just didn't feel a moment of the presence of God in that service. I'm not criticizing them. I just made me realize you can have big, but not have God. And um, we're just so grateful for the presence of God that is in our worship, that's in all of us today. You know, when we gather, God gathers. And, um, and, and, and so we, we really are great to be home, grateful to be home. Um, I just, I'm going to preach this morning if I have time. Um, but there's a few things I wanted to say before I got to my message. The first thing I wanted to say was a big thank you um, from Monica and our family. Uh, we wanted to say thank you for releasing us to have uh, 12 weeks away. I know we were back for, for Shout. We wouldn't have missed that for the world. But I want to say thank you for giving us the freedom to go. And uh, that, that's to our elders and our pastors and our staff, but also from you guys, because um, we've had so many encouraging messages. Uh, you know, when you, when you think about taking a significant period of time off and the little, back, little voice in the back of your head sometimes says, well, I wonder what people think. And, you know, maybe people thinking, well, it's good for you. I wish I could have time off. But, you know, we had just so many beautiful messages of encouragement saying, uh, have an amazing time. We know you need this. We know God's going to do something great. And so we're just so uh, grateful that we went uh, feeling sent and feeling encouraged to go. Um, we're thankful for the resource we went with. Uh, one of the things that this church does is um, every month we put a small amount of money aside um, for our pastors um, and uh, that accumulates over well, what should be seven years. It was nine years for us. Uh, accumulates, which means there's some resource uh, to be able to travel and do things that we couldn't do otherwise. But you know, in addition to that, so many people People in this church just generously put envelopes in our hands as we were leaving and that just said this is for your family this is to go and enjoy and just the generosity that's in this house um, not just people's words but but people's resources uh, we I, I want to say just an enormous uh, thank you um, I want to say thank you also for just serving so well in the last three months um, you know, I, I love church. Monica and I love church. We're church people. Um, I was saying to the volunteer celebration team yesterday, um, you know, we, we love church so much. We, we would just we'd arrive early uh, to church everywhere we went. Sometimes we were so excited to get there, would be like embarrassingly early. And then we'd have to sit in the car for 20 minutes. And so we weren't like the first people through the door. We just love church. We want to be in God's presence. We want to be where God is. Um, and, uh, but I've been able to just truly switch off. I have not looked at a single number. I've not looked at a single figure in the time that I've been away. But, um, but everybody tells me that just God's been good and people keep showing up and 
great preachers and great atmosphere and God's been doing things and people are getting saved. And, and I just wanna thank you for continuing to serve uh, in the way that you have. I was blessed this morning by Johanna, uh, worship leading and Glenn. I just thought, wow, these guys are just continuing to bring an atmosphere of God's presence every week. So just give yourselves a hand for a moment, all of you who've served and just made this place great. And um, I, all, I also just want to thank our amazing staff team um, who have just continued to, to make sure that every week just happens absolutely amazingly well. And I'm not going to call them out this morning. They know who they are. But I'm so grateful that we've got a team that um, can do what they do every week. Um, I literally arrived back with Monica the week of Shout Conference. And uh, my, my first meeting was really as Shout started. And that's a testament just to the leadership uh, that we have within this church. It doesn't rest on my shoulders or Monica's. There's just a, a great great wealth of leadership that can pull things like that off. So can you give you a hand just for our amazing staff for a moment this morning? I, I would love that. One of the, um, one of the reasons sabbaticals are really important, and um, I actually believe it's not just for pastors. Um, I actually believe if you're a businessman, if you're, if you're in a career for a long period of time, if you can find a way to make it happen, that actually a, a significant break is incredibly important. Um, one of the things about leading a church, which is a great privilege and it's a great honor, um, uh, is preaching, uh, is leading, is inspiring people uh, with what we feel that God is saying. But um, there is a demand and a cost to that that is often unseen unless you're the one doing it. And my, my plan was in the final week before I went on sabbatical, my, my plan was I'll just kind of ramp down a little bit what I'm doing so I don't, you know that, that I think when you're going on holiday, you know, you know, you like, you work like crazy to the last day and then you get on the plane and you crash. I thought I'm not going to do that. I'm going to try and, I'm going to try and ramp it down and do less and less in that last week. Um, as it turned out, I think I ended up speaking seven times that week. And I was like, that did not go to plan at all. Like, that was not the plan. I think I ended up speaking seven times. And just realizing and recognizing that there was a demand, um, uh, not just physically, but a demand spiritually and a demand emotionally when it comes to sharing what you believe God wants people to hear. And uh, one of the things that's just been so amazing over the last 12 weeks uh, has been uh, naturally uh, enjoying time with family and being inspired by different churches. But just having the demand of presenting content, for want of a better word, um, has just been incredibly refreshing. And uh, to be able to open my journal on a Monday morning and just the journal of what I feel like God is saying with that, the thought of, I, could I turn this into a message for Sunday? <laughs> Does anybody know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Could I turn this into something? Could I develop this into something? It's just been incredibly refreshing. And so, and so we have just enjoyed um, that so much. And so again, I just, wanted, I just really wanted to say thank you this morning. Um, I'm gonna share two highlights in just a moment. But before I do, I just uh, two photos that I wanted to show you. Here's, here's one of my personal highlights. Um, this, I, got, I got to drive this car in Colorado. I just thought I'd show it to you. Um, it was a Dodge Ram. It was the largest four by four that I could hire. And uh, I drove it for a week and I cried at the airport when I gave it back. Um, I, I, I loved it so much. It was just Monica and I, if we wanted to hold hands, we had to like both extend as far as we possibly could. And uh, I fell in love with that car. I'm gonna have one one day uh, in the name of, yeah, I, probably not. But anyway, that was fun. And then let me show you one of Monica's highlights. Would you put that next photo up? Here's one of Monica's highlights uh, from Been Away. There it is. Um, that was like a dream come true for Monica. I think she got a little bit teary. I think she got a little bit overwhelmed. It, it was just her in the queue with all the other five-year-olds. And um, in fact, what had happened is the kids and I had gone to ride a ride that Monica was too afraid to go on. So she said, she said, she said, I'll, she said I'll meet you for coffee later. But in the meantime, she snuck off to the, to the meet and greet queue uh, to meet Minnie. And uh, she, I tell you, she was lost for words. She, I could tell she was in the, in the presence of greatness and uh, she was a little overwhelmed. She had to sit down for a moment and uh, she just loved Minnie and, and, and um, 
actually, there you go. That's what we did. That's what we did. Now, we, we had great time visiting some amazing churches, and, and then we had some extended time away. Uh, we visited about 12 different churches, all sorts of different churches, um, some here in the UK, some in the States. Um, just two highlights that I wanted to share with you, um, and then I'll preach a little bit this morning. First highlight was actually our very first Sunday, our second Sunday on sabbatical. Um, we had the privilege of going to Bethel Church in Redding, California, uh, that many of you would have heard of, um, led by a great man called um, Pastor Bill Johnson, who you've probably heard me quote many times before. And um, um, through um, an introduction, uh, we had the privilege of getting to meet uh, Pastor Bill. Uh, we had about 10 or 15 minutes before the service just to chat with him and to speak with him. And um, I, I've just got to say, um, I came away feeling like th this guy is the real deal. One of the most humble, kind, generous people. We were absolutely no one in his world, uh, but he went out of his way just to make us feel so welcome. Uh, he prayed for us right at the start of our sabbatical. He prayed a prayer that I will really remember for a long time. It was very significant. And uh, we had some great time uh, there. He preached at the end of the message. I was sat on the, I think, the, about the second row. Um, he, he finished his message. He got back down. And again, I'm no one in his world. And he walked up to me, gave me an enormous hug. He said, thank you so much for coming to visit our church. Um, I really, you know, blessed the rest of your sabbatical. That was a real highlight for me. It really stayed with me. I, I felt like I had met someone significant in the kingdom, but in the flesh, they were just the real deal just the real deal. Not a superstar, but just a pastor of a church that's become very significant all around the world. And I found it incredibly inspiring. Uh, that second um, highlight that I wanted to share with you this morning, a few of you have seen this, um, but we had the privilege, great privilege, great honor of visiting a church um, of someone who's been uh, a mentor to me from a distance. His name is Dr. Michael Maiden, uh, ministered in this church several times and equippers all around the world. Uh, probably um, one of the most accurate prophets um, that um, certainly I have ever met or ever sat under the ministry of. Um, he has prophesied over this church many times. He's prophesied over our lives and as we look at those words, it's just incredible. Um, as you travel within Equippers, you hear these stories, Dr. Michael Maiden prophesied, and this is what happened. Dr. Michael Maiden prophesied. And so he prophesied over Monica and I in his service, and I wanted to show that to you this morning, um, because when, um, you know, when a person gets prophesied, when a pastor gets prophesied over, there's an implication for the church they lead. And so this prophecy is not just for Monica and I, this is for us as a church. And I thought it might be um, encouraging to you to see it this morning. So just have a look at the screen for a moment as you watch this. My friends are here, Pastor Mark and Monica Collard from Equippers Church in London, England. Would you help me pray for them? God, thank you for my friends, these wonderful world-class leaders that you've called. Pastor Mark was a airline pilot radically saved and now he's a Jesus church pilot he's, 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 he's. I saw it was like a chess board and you said gosh every time we make a move the devil kind of counters it and it looks like a breakthrough and then it stopped and I heard the Lord laughing God's making three moves in these like next 12 13 months three moves that are going to checkpoint the enemy. They're go going to stop and checkmate the enemy. And you're gonna see things that have been delayed happen, including property miracles. So God is, God is orchestrating an outcome that he's determined, he's planned, he's purposed, and he's sanctioned. God is setting up kind of a headquarters for your church to be a revival center for all of Europe. And not just London, which needs it, like Phoenix needs it, but all of Europe. And people are going to say, man, what is happening there? We, every time we go there, we catch something. We catch a fire. We catch a, a refreshing. We catch something from God. And God's showing you as it was always apostolic. It was always this, this resourcing that brought the body of Christ in a large way. Favor is coming to you. I saw these two large religious groups. 
Pastor Mark and Monica pa Pastor in the Quippers movement, which I'm humbled to minister in all over the world. But God's connecting you to some religious movements, some spiritual movements in the, in the continent, especially in England, that your voice is going to be like a piece, a missing puzzle piece. And so God's changing things. God's, God's moving you into a larger umbrella, a larger environment of leadership. People are going to recognize who you've always been, but who God's now allowing them to see. God's proud of your patience, your endurance, your faithfulness. This Monica, you're a gift from heaven. There's no guile in you. There's no, there's no uh, offense in you. It's amazing how good-natured you are, even with ill-natured people. God's just so proud of you. You're the mother of champions, and in this season, you're going to see things happen you prayed 15 years ago. This is the harvest season for prayers to be fulfilled. This is the harvest season for breakthroughs and answers. I saw, it was like a locked door on your side of the family, and they said that we can't get them. And I saw the Lord said, I'm opening the door for salvation in your family. And you're going to see long-term addictions, deceptions, and oppressions are broken. God, thank you for sending salvation to her family. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Come on, put your hand together if you be believe that this morning. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. And so those are some prophetic promises over our church in the next season, the next 12 months. It's going to be three moves that, that the Lord's going to make on our behalf to checkmate the enemy where he's, uh, he's been working against us. And uh, God's setting up a revival center for Europe. How many of you like that? And um, so amen, amen. Amen. Well, listen, just before I get to the word, um, let me just say last night, a group of us uh, drove down to uh, Bristol, and uh, we were part of uh, the celebration of 30 years of Edge Church, and uh, today uh, they are relaunching as a Quippers Church in Bristol. Uh, so there they are. There's the new sign outside the front of the building and all that kind of stuff. And um, so that's happening today. So uh, if you've got Pastor Peter's number uh, in your phone, how about sending him a message and encour encouraging him today as they lead that church into a new season. Amen. All right. How many of you ready for the word this morning? It's going to be a little shorter than normal, um, but we'll, we'll, we'll start. And I think I'll probably continue this tonight. Um, I'm going to take you to a number of different scriptures this morning. I wanted to start off, though, in 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel 17, and um, I wanted to talk to you this morning really from the idea of the reward of serving God. The reward of serving God. How many of you know God is a rewarder of those who love Him and seek Him, the Bible says? Give me a wave if you say you, amen. God is a rewarder of His people. And I want to talk to you a little bit this morning about some of the rewards and the situation that God loves to reward His people. Amen. So in 1 Samuel 17, we find the story of David and Goliath, one of my favorite stories in the Bible. And if you don't know the story, the Israelites are being afflicted uh, by the Philistines. And uh, you've got two armies facing off against one another. And you have Goliath, uh, who is their champion. He, he's the biggest, he's the strongest, he's the greatest warrior they have. And every day he comes out twice a day and he shouts threats to the enemy, which is Israel, on the other side um, of the valley. And he basically says, if anyone is brave enough to come and fight me, then let them come. And then whoever wins, their nation will serve the other nation. And so this goes on for 40 days, and the Israelites are terrified at this point. And at that point, David shows up on the scene. And you probably know the story. David turns up. David, uh, something inside of him is indignant that the Israelite people, uh, that his God is being called the names that they've been called. And David rises up. David goes into battle. And David does what Saul would not do and probably should have done. He goes and defeats Goliath. And we celebrate that victory. We celebrate that story. It's a story of overcoming. It's a story of identifying giants in your own life 
that you need to decide you're going to take down? How many of you know we've all got giants? Come on now. We've all got giants that, that, that if we don't face, they will overcome us. Uh, we've actually got to approach our giants and go after them. You can't live with your giants. You have to defeat your giants. And so David decides this is what he's going to do. But I love what David does or what he says in verse 26. Because David turns up on the scene and he hasn't yet defeated Goliath. But he, he goes to the soldiers nearby and he asks them a question. And the question he asks them is, what will a man get for killing the Philistines and ending his defiance of Israel? David turns up and he says, hey, what does somebody get for defeating that giant? Now, you can read this as one of two ways. You can read this uh, as kind of David saying, you know, what's in it for me? Like, what's in it for me? If I take on that giant, what's in it for me? But I don't think that is the spirit in which David asked the question. I think David already knew he was going to go out and defeat this giant. I think the minute that he heard his God being defiled, uh, the names thrown at him, I think something rose up in David and said, I'm going to defeat this giant. But I do know this, that my heavenly father is a rewarder of people who take risks in the name of his kingdom. And so David is not asking the question, if the reward's big enough, I'll do it. I think David is saying, hey, I'm going to do this anyway, but I know when I live for God, when I serve God, when I give Him my life, there is a reward that comes back to me. Amen. And so, so they say to him, well, the reward's pretty good. Number one, you're going to get great wealth. Well, I was very quiet of you this morning. I thought, I thought there might be a couple of amens at least at the idea of great wealth. There was great, he was going to get great wealth. Number two, he was going to get to marry the king's daughter. There we go. Well, there's a little bit more excitement about that one in the room. I could, uh, yeah. They're going to get to marry into royalty and, uh, and, and there was going to be something good coming his way. And then the third one you're all going to, get be, going to be really excited about. There was going to be no taxes for life. Can I get an amen? There we go. There was going to be no taxes for the rest of his life. And David recognized there is a reward that comes with taking risks for God's kingdom and going after the things of God. I actually want to encourage you this morning. Um, I, I believe for many of us in this room, you've got a reward coming. You've got a reward coming. Not your neighbor for a moment, just say, there's a reward coming. There's a reward coming. You know, it's a little bit like anyone got a credit card where you get some rewards? And, um, you know, you got, you got credit cards, of course, and they, 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 many of them will accumulate different types of rewards. And there's a couple of things about that. Um, you might have a credit card that is giving you rewards right now. And, and the first thing is you didn't even know that there any were any rewards associated with that credit card. Anybody ever discovered that? Like three years down the line, somebody told you, did you know that you can get free cinema tickets? Or did you know, you know, it gives you priority? You're like, I didn't even know I could do that. Some, that's sometimes what happens with a reward card. Or sometimes you kind of know you have a reward card that can do something, but you just never use it. You just never use it. Um, we, we got a credit card. I don't know which one it is, but Monica has this reward. It's not like a wow reward, but she likes to use it. Once a week, she can go to Cafe Nero and she can get a coffee for a pound. I mean, it's not going to change your life or anything. It's not like, but, but you know, sometimes she's out, she's taking the dog for a walk and she disappears for a little longer than I thought she was going to go. And I say, where have you been? And she said, I used my one pound coffee. And it puts a big smile on her face. I think she just, I don't know, big smile on her face because she used the reward. So some of us, it's like we've got a credit card that we don't know the rewards of. Some of us have got a credit card that have rewards, but we don't ever actually redeem the rewards. But I want to suggest that in God, this is a metaphor, by the way. Nobody's going out with here with Equippers Church credit cards this morning. It's a metaphor. But when it comes to our faith, uh, we have a credit card that is actually laden with rewards, 
But some of us don't know we have them. Some of us may be apathetic in walking in faith to receive them. Or sometimes you just got to pause and you got to look at your life and you got to go, oh my goodness, look at the rewards that God has given me over my life. Can I tell you, just being on sabbatical, it was like a reward from heaven. It was like a reward from heaven. It was like, here's a reward for just doing this thing for 20 years faithfully. It was like a reward from God. Now you got to understand when it comes to salvation, we don't earn our salvation. We don't earn our salvation. Our salvation is unearned. Our salvation was earned at the cross by Jesus and His blood as a free gift to every single person who would say yes and amen to it. And the rewards that come from God in many ways are not earned either. They are rewards of faith. They are the rewards of the goodness of God simply for living life the way that He asks us to live. And I've got a list of about 12 different ways that we can earn or, or redeem these rewards this morning. But I want to just stir your faith a little bit to have an expectation that for the rest of the year, God has got some rewards for us where we have been living His way, where we have been journeying in faith. When, when we've been doing things in the quiet place that nobody else has seen, there are rewards. Are you with me? So here's a couple this morning as we go. Number one, there is a reward for obedience and there is a reward for walking in faith. There is a reward for obedience and there is a reward for walking in faith. In Genesis chapter 15, we read a couple of verses about Abraham or Abram as he is in Genesis 15. And Abram, if you don't know, uh, ultimately went on to be the father of Israel, the father of a great nation. And one day God came to him and he said, Abram, I want you to leave your home, leave everything you know, leave your family, leave living in a brick house, and I want you to come with me, live in a tent, and I'm going to take you somewhere. You don't know where you're going. I'm not going to tell you where you're going, but if you'll come with me, Abram, I'm going to do something amazing in your life. And Abram did something completely shocking. Abram believed God. <laughs> He obeyed God and he went on an amazing faith journey. And in verse 1 of chapter 15, it says this, Sometime later, the Lord spoke to Abram in a vision. And he said to him, Do not be afraid, Abram, for I will protect you. Protection is a reward in its own right, don't you think? Don't you think? Parents, when your kids go off to school... You don't need to freak out, worry, cry, panic. But we can trust that our children will have the protection of God upon their lives if we live our lives according to how God asked us to live them. It's a reward in its own life. But he says, do not be afraid, Abram, I will protect you. And look, I'm, watch this, I love this. And your reward will be great. Isn't that good? God says to Abram, I got a great reward for you, Abram. And the reason I've got a great reward for you is you obeyed me and you came on the journey of faith that I invited you to come upon. You know, I'm not for a moment comparing myself to the life of Abram, but 20, uh, nearly one years ago, I walked away from a profession that would have taken care of me and my family financially for the rest of my life, would have had me earning a pretty nice six plus figure salary uh, until I die with a, with a retirement plan to go with it. And the Lord called me out of that into a new journey. And I, I, I'm so glad that something within me had the, the faith and the guts and the ability to say yes to the call of God. Because 20 plus years later, I look back on my life and I can honestly say, I see the reward of God over and over and over again. I really do. I, I, I look at the small things that happen in our family, uh, something that might not mean a lot to you, but means a lot to Monica and I. And it's like, I didn't do anything to deserve that. That's the reward of God. Amen. 
This, this church is the, for Monica and I, is the reward of obedience over a long period of time. And we're just getting going. And there's so much more that God wants to do. And if you're in a place right now, you're like, man, do I, do I, do I lean into obedience? Or do I continue to do it my way? Can I encourage you? There's a reward for obeying God. In fact, as Pastor Bruce Munk has said to me many, many, many times, the, the blessing, the favor always comes on the other side of your obedience. You know, our obedience as a church to lean into prophetically to what God is saying, if we'll do that, I promise you there's a reward coming to us. And, and, and we don't do it for the reward, but how many of you say, thank God for the reward? And we say, we're not going to turn down the reward. We're going to say, God, if you've got rewards for me, I think we'll receive them. Thank you very much. But there's rewards for obedience and there is reward for faith. The reward for Abram was that he became a father of a great nation and is still remembered today. But not only that, the, the New Testament tells us that because of Abraham's journey of faith, he became a friend of God. Come on, that's what a reward. And maybe you're here this morning and you're looking at the person next to you and thinking, I'd like to be their friend. Or maybe you heard Monica uh, lead this morning and thought, I'd like to be her friend. Or maybe you heard Glenn lead worship and you thought, I'd like to be his friend. I got news for you. you. You can have greater friendship than that. You can have friendship with God himself when we do life his way. What a reward. <laughs> friendship with God. Woo. I mean, I've got some great friends here, but they don't compare to God's friendship. <laughs> Amen. So there's, there's a reward for walking in obedience and faith. Here's another one. Uh, there's a reward for hard work when it comes to the gospel and when it comes to the extension of the kingdom of God. There's a reward for working hard. Give me a wave if you've ever worked hard for the extension. I'm not talking about working hard to make a, make a pound or I keep on saying dollars because I've been in America so long. I, I, please correct me if I bring in any slang that should not be here. Um, how many of you ever worked hard for the kingdom? Oh, come on. That's the three of you have been bold this morning. Uh, how many of you ever worked hard for the kingdom? I got good news for you. There's a reward. You should be more excited than that. There's a reward for those of you who got here at 7 o'clock this morning and opened the doors and got us ready for church. And for those of you who packed in here on Friday night, and there's a reward for those amazing people serving our kids this morning. And there's a reward for the venue team who uh, put up with the hot, the cold, the rain, the sleet, uh, everything else that comes at them. There's a reward for, 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 for serving the Lord. Here it is. It's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 to 8. It's the Apostle Paul speaking. He says this, I planted the seed in your hearts, and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. Listen to this. It is not important. Everybody say it's not important. It is not important who does the planting or who does the watering. I don't know about you. I, I, I always thought to myself, I want to be the one that waters because you see the growth straight away. In fact, I remember being in a meeting. Pastor Bruce Monk was talking about this scripture. There was only about 12 of us around the table. And he shared the scripture and he said, some plant and some water and some people just see quick growth and other people are a foundation builder. And as a bit of a joke, I kind of said, I want to be the, I want to be the second one. <laughs> I want to be the one that, you know, pours the water and sees the quick growth. And Pastor Bruce laughed in the way that he does, laughed and went, ha, 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 ha. The only problem is, Mark, he said, I think you're the planter. <laughs> Oh, no, that's not, that's not what I want. But it's probably true. <laughs> so it doesn't matter who plants or who does the watering. What is important is that God makes the seed grow. The one who plants and the one who waters work together with the same purpose. Now listen to this. And both, somebody say both, both. will be rewarded for their own hard work. Isn't that good? Well, they'll both be rewarded for their hard work. 
I might be the one with the microphone in my hand this morning preaching, but there are many, many people who work hard to make this church a place of gathering and a place of love and a place of relationship. And we all get rewarded for the hard work. Some of you are out there uh, outside of the four walls of the church, sowing the gospel, taking the gospel into workplaces and into schools and and into different parts of the world, taking Bibles into places. Some of you go into prison. Some of you travel to other nations to do things. Wonderful news. God says there's a reward. Now, don't get proud about it. Don't walk around and puff your chest up and say, well, I'm pretty amazing. There's a reward coming to you. No, no, we've got to operate in a spirit of humility, knowing that the only reason we get to do what we do is that God gave us the ability to do it in the first place. So don't get proud about it, but do have an expectation in your heart that says, God, I've worked hard for the gospel. I believe there are rewards that are going to come to my life. You know, when it comes to serving in this church, we believe in serving. We believe it's a part of what it means to be a follower of Jesus, uh, to to serve in some way. And I I just want to encourage you, man, there's, there's reward for it. There's reward for it. I look at Shout Conference. We, I think, had something like between 300 and 350 different people serving to make that conference work. Amazing. Now, people didn't serve for the reward. People served because they love God. But can I just encourage you this morning, if you did serve, if you did work hard, how about having a faith um, attitude this week that says, God, there's rewards for serving hard in the kingdom. When we do that, I believe God loves that. I believe He loves the faith uh, that, that rises on the inside of us. Let me, let me just give you just one more before we close this morning. Um, there is a reward. I'm going to put it like this. There is a reward that goes to the generations that comes from God. I wonder, John, if you could come. There's a reward that goes to the generations. So Proverbs 11, verse 18 says this in the NLT. It says, evil people get rich for the moment, but the reward, I love this. How many of you love the book of Proverbs? I've been studying that the book of Proverbs has been my thing for the last three months. You're going to hear me talk a lot about the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 11 says this, the evil people get rich for a moment, but the reward of the godly will last. Say that with me. Say, but the reward. Say one more time. Say, but the reward of the godly will last. Woo! That's amazing. The the rich get, or the evil get rich for a moment. But how many of you know those riches, they're not going to take them with them to heaven. They, they, man, they're, they're not taking them with them. But, but the Bible says the reward of, of godly living, the reward of living righteously, the, the, the reward of living right before God and right before other people produces a generational reward. That is amazing news. I, I, I can tell you, I walk in the blessing of the obedience of my mother and father. In fact, the greatest thing I can thank my mom and dad for is that they said yes to the Lord and they served Him in the best way that they possibly could for, for all of their lives. That's the, the greatest thing they did for me. It wasn't giving me an education, though I thank God for my education. It wasn't, that was the greatest thing they did. Said yes to the Lord, walked in the best way that they knew how before God. And today I walk in a legacy and a blessing that is an overflow of their lives. Because the reward to the godly does not end. It goes generation to generation. Are you with me? And I look at my children and I remind them on a semi-regular basis (laughs) that they are very, very blessed (laughs) 
they are very, very blessed to live in our home because not only do they live in the blessing of my obedience and Monica's obedience, but they live in the overflow of their grandparents' obedience as well. That's an, what a blessing. Like what a reward. Woo, the reward of heaven, like not here for a moment. I mean, I know if I said to somebody this morning, God wants to bless you with a new car, you'd be on your feet. Woo, amen. I'll take the new car. But how many of you know the new car is gonna start to break down? One day it's gonna rust. One day it's gonna be the side of a car. It's gonna be in a, in a garage in a hundred pieces. And you're gonna say, I never wanna see that thing ever again. It's like a blessing for a moment, but it won't last forever. But the blessing of God when you serve Him, when you give your life to Him, goes generation to generation. Now listen, my, I've had to fight my own battles that my dad, my dad had his battles to fight. I've got my battles to fight and my kids are gonna have their bat battles to fight. Why? Because if you don't have a battle to fight, you never grow strong. How do you go strong in life? You fight a battle. How do you grow in the things of the Lord? You face something, you see it down, you walk through the other side of it and you grow in spiritual authority. So the Lord will never remove from you every giant and every obstacle. It would be unkind of Him to do that because you will never grow strong. So my dad had battles to fight. I've got battles to fight. My children will have battles to fight. But the, the reward of serving the Lord goes generation to generate. It never ends according to the book of Proverbs. Isn't that amazing? That's the reward. Somebody say, I've got a reward coming. Come on, somebody say, I've got a reward coming. Come on, some of you grandparents out there tonight. So I've got a reward coming and it looks like my grandkids flourishing in the presence of God and the house of God because I served the best way that I possibly could. Amen. There's a reward coming. How about standing to your feet this morning? I think the presence of God is an, is an amazing reward as well, by the way. <laughs> Come on, can you sense His presence this morning? It's beautiful anointing of the Holy Ghost. You might wanna just lift your hands for a moment. Enjoy His presence, enjoy His anointing. Jesus, we love You. You have been so good to us. You've been so good to us, Lord. You've been rewarding us when we didn't even know it. Come on, even right now, I just, it's like, I believe Holy Spirit just wants to show you where the reward of heaven has been on your life and your family. And you didn't even know it. You didn't even know it. Sometimes it's like we got a credit card, we did, but we didn't even know we had the reward. Come on, I declare it right now. Over you, Gyro, this morning, there's a reward in your household. I, it's like God's gonna show it to you. It's like a jewel. Maybe you didn't even see it before. Or maybe God's gonna bring something fresh to your attention and say, that's yours to enjoy. I declare that this morning in Jesus' Name. Come on, anyone else right now, that's them. They say, man, I, I, I wanna see the reward in my life for putting God first. I believe there's a group of people here this morning, you've been working hard for God. It's like, God, I've been working hard. Nobody's thanked me. Nobody's said, well done. Nobody sees what I do. But I've been serving in different ways, in different places. Come on, if that's you right now, I want you to lift your eyes. I want you to lift your heart, lift your expectation and say, I've got a reward coming. Not because I'm greedy, not because, it, not because anything like that, but just to understand, our God is a rewarder. He's a good Father. He's a good Father, amen. You know, both of our, our sons while we were away got A-level results, got GCSE results, and, um, and they both did incredibly well. And we were so, uh, you know, thankful and relieved. No, 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 we were, we, we, you know, we were just, we were, but well, what do we want to do? I, I want to be a father that represents the heart of God. So what do we do? We celebrate it. 
We rewarded their hard work. Just say, man, you worked hard. We're going to reward that. Come on, I believe this morning the Lord wants to reward you. This gentleman on the end, I'm sorry I don't know your name, but I think we've met you, sir. I believe there's a reward from God that is um, it's imminent. Let me put it like that. There's a reward from the Father. And I don't know what you do. I don't know what you've done or how you've served Him. But I believe this morning God just wants to shine His spotlight on you this morning just to let you know that everything's been seen. Nothing's been forgotten. Nothing has been wasted in the kingdom of God and all that you've done for it. But I believe there's just a beautiful reward from heaven. And I I even believe it's just simply impart a beautiful sense of the presence of God in your life. And this week as you go home and you get in your car and you drive to work and as you worship, I I believe there's a hunger in your heart for the richness of the presence of God. And I believe God's heard your prayer and He's heard your cry and He's going to anoint you even right now. He's just anointing you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet and the tenderness, the hunger the desire for His anointing and for His presence on your life is just just breaking out right now. Breaking out. I command it right now in the name of Jesus. Just an atmosphere of just His presence all over your life. Dreams coming to life again. Hope's been reimbursed. Uh, breaking out all over again in Jesus' name. And so I, I, I bless you, sir, this morning in the, name of the, in the name of Jesus that His presence will be your reward today for loving Him. Come on for a moment. Can we lift our hands? Could we just for a moment just just worship for a moment? Come on, just lift our voices. Just tell Him you love Him. Just tell Him He's awesome this morning. Just as we close, we love You, Lord. Oh, we worship You, Jesus.